We're going to talk today a little bit about edges, the different types of brim edges to your hats. There's essentially three real popular ones. The raw edge, the welted edge, which is folded under and stitched, or folded over and stitched, kind of like a hem on a piece of clothing. The welt, or the bound edge, which is uh, trimmed with ribbon on the edge. It's got binding, it's bound with a grow grain ribbon, usually to match here, but not always. Um, generally, it's kind of matches, you know. Now, um, are there different purposes, and different um, pros and cons and stuff like that for the edges? Well, for the most part, it's really down to just personal taste. It's what people are going to like or dislike. Um, you have a lot of traditional hats like the, the Saxon or the, um, what's another one? It's a whole bunch of old school Stetsons. It's uh, another one that looks like the Whippet, but it has no binding and stuff. Um, there's a lot of old school Stetsons that people order. Uh, the Selby, I'm thinking of too, the short brim one. There's the Selby, the Saxon. They have welted edges because they're sort of like old man hats, and um, old men like that edge. It looks stronger to them, and it probably is a little stronger because it's doubled up. It's not thin, it's doubled and, you know, made thicker. And it probably gives you a little more snap and stuff. People associate the welted edge with cheaper hats because a lot of people start with light felt hats, crushable rollable light felt, which almost always have uh, a welted edge. And it gives it a thicker edge. So when they look at the more expensive hats, it has these sort of thin edge. And people sort of associate that with looking more authentic or more real or more expensive. So they want that raw edge. But in reality, they, they do the welt to give you more strength. Um, on a crushable hat, it keeps it stable and straight. Uh, and it, it does add something on a welt. It definitely does. Uh, if they took it off the light felt hats and they just had raw edges, uh, they wouldn't look good. And they do have a few examples of hats like that, but most people just stop doing that. Um, it just doesn't work out. Now, um, the reasons I can't tell you, but uh, it seems to just, uh, you know, physics or geometry, it's, it's a stronger kind of an edge. People will tend to be a little turned off by it unless they're like, you know, a vintage nut or something and then they're into stuff that just looks oldish, oldish or old-timey looking, vintage-y, I guess, Anti antique-y. So, um, what I'm getting at is the welted edge definitely does add a little strength, but the raw edge versus the um, bound edge, not much. There's not much difference there. You can take um, a hat with a raw edge and a big brim and a thin felt, uh, soft felt, and all those things will equal a hat that might curl up or just get a little wavy with, with steam even or, or with rain. But um, you can take the same hat with a bound edge with some ribbon on there and you'll be like, oh well, at least it doesn't have the old uh, raw edge, you know, I've got this little strengthening thing on the side. No, the, the binding really doesn't add much at all. If anything, it adds polish. It makes it look more custom. It might even keep the edge from getting a little dirtier with your hands. I'm not sure about that. Probably not. I guess the binding will get dirty too. Um, yeah, and a binding you can't sand. Where a welted edge, if it's dirty, or a raw edge, you could just sand off that last layer of felt and get rid of it. So, yeah, that's a moot point. Um, but overall, the welt is the only one that's really adding something to it. Um, there used to be something called a Kavanaugh edge. The Kavanaugh hat company um, were the only ones who knew how to make it. So they're kind of gone these days. You don't see Kavanaugh edges. They're essentially like a hat that's welted, but you don't see the stitching. It's somehow just kind of folded over and then bonded back into the hat. And then you don't see any stitching. Uh, maybe they used glue and then high pressure or something. 
you know, nobody really knows how they did it, but and how they did it, but most likely something like that, you know. Um, so it's like this really neat thing. You find old vintage hats that have a cav edge, short for Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh was the company that really made that famous. But um, I've seen Cavanaugh's and I've also seen old, you know, vintage Borsellinos with them, other companies. Um, with that type of edge, although they might have invented it or had the patent on it or something. They're definitely gone um, with the wind. No companies make those cab edges anymore. Um, they just don't usually bother with it or they don't know how to do it. Um, the thing is, if you have a Cavanaugh edge, they're really cool, you know. But, uh, yeah, they're gone. It's, a, it's an old thing. Um, give me a second. So, welted edge is going to be your strongest kind of edge. Welted edge with a short brim is going to be twice as, it's going to be really strong. A big brim generally is not as stable as a short brim. I'm talking, you know, snap brim fedoras now. Um, anything that's stiffer, good quality felt, you know, shorter brim, welted edge, these are all things that, you know, the brims don't give you much problems. Shorter brims like the Asher, you know, if it gets like a little out like this, you just push it like that and now it's back, you know. There's nothing there, there's not enough for it to mess up and the the flange itself is not big and flat and long like this, it's like this little scoop. So it's hard to lose it, if that makes any sense. It's got a nice, like scoopy kind of a flange to it. The Asher is a really good hat. Um, it's well made. But um, getting off of that tangent and back onto the, uh, the point is that uh, yeah, your welted edges are going to be a little bit better in terms of being stronger, but a short brim with a welted edge is even better. Um, if you're going to do something like that, you keep the brims shorter. If you're doing, uh, you know, like uh, anything that you think might be getting wet, uh, the bigger brims, the thinner hats, the softer hats, and the raw edges tend to be more problematic for rain. So um, yeah, don't uh, count out that uh, welted edge hat. We have uh, some really nice uh, old models that are on sale too. Um, the, the old version of the Ken, made in Spain, used to be called the Cordoba. It had a welted, I think an underwelt. Um, we decided to change that because it wasn't as popular as the whip stitch and raw edge. Um, so those are half price now. So you could get those like whatever, 200 something dollar hats for like 100 and something. And uh, I think it's 30% off of that when we have them on sale. I think the 30 off just ended, but uh, knowing JJ's, there'll be more sales coming and stuff. Um, The whip stitch. Now the whip stitch is basically something that they throw on a raw edge. They basically take a hat, they cut it raw, you know, just like a scissor. It's done with like a blade, sort of like a blade on a compass, goes around and cuts it round. And then they take a machine, like a sewing machine, and they put stitching on the very edge. So you can't really see the edge of the felt anymore. It's kind of honed to this very fine, fine point. Um, and it makes it look very sharp, even sharper than raw edge. That's a very Italian, kind of a European look, and it's nice. Uh, whip stitches, they're not going to really be any stronger or weaker than a raw edge. Um, they're kind of the same. Most of that stuff depends on the felt quality and how much it's been stiffened. Um, you know, if it's thinner felt, it's going to do better if it's not soft and it's really overly stiffened. Um, if it's cheaper felt too. If it's better felt, you can get away with the longer brims, the th softer felt, um, the raw edges and things like that with zero uh, waviness because the felt is so good. Um, so that's a lot of times when you see hats that are wool but not light felt in our shop, they're super stiff. Like the wool derby, uh, we have a, an American made uh, wool felt derby a boulder that you know it looks really nice but it's inexpensive it's american made it's made in new york but it's wool they really stiffen it it's like 
but that's the only way to get felt like that to behave. If you keep it soft, it's it's going to mess up just from the humidity, you know. Um, another hat we have is called the Stingy Wool Pork Pie. The Wool Stingy Pork Pie is like a really tiny little pork pie, but it's hard. You know, like almost like it's dipped in plastic for a second. And that kind of felt is, it's wool. It's American made wool, but it's not light felt. So it's a little bit further down the hierarchy than, you know, a crushable, rollable light felt, which is patented and doled out by like one company. Um, it's regular felt, but um, they stiffen it so much that the felt is really, it's controllable. If it starts getting rained on, that stiffener just holds it till you get home. Um, to an extent, you know, none of these hats are made for heavy rains, but, you know, it'll get you through most emergency situations. You're better off sticking, like, a plastic bag over it or something, or, you know, do what you gotta do, you know. But, uh, keep them away from heat, definitely, if you got a wool hat like that and you get it wet. But the Hamburgs, the Boulders, the Derbies that are made from wool, a little bit cheaper felt, um, they stiffen them a lot because it gives you a lot, lot more control. Um, and that's what it's all about, you know, control. You want to be able to, you know, do what you want with your hat. You don't want your hat doing, you know, stuff like this by itself, and you can't control it. So, generally, um, when you get decent felt, these are not issues, but there are some hats that are nice felt, but there's just not lots of it because maybe they want to keep the weight of the hat down. Um, that's a big issue too. Sometimes they want to keep weight down on hats and they want them to be light. So, you know, the last thing they worry about is how is it going to do in the rain because not everybody's wearing these hats in the rain. People are, you know, going to get caught in the rain occasionally. So, you know, little drizzles are doing okay. But, um, they're not prepared on a lot of these hats. Um, the fur felt hats can be more temperamental sometimes than even the cheaper stuff like the the light felts or um, or um, hats that are stiffer or hats that have shorter brims, um, thicker things, western hats. You know, you could have a two hundred dollar western hat and a um, a six hundred dollar beaver dress hat. Which one's going to do better in the blizzard? Probably the harder, thicker one, not the softer, finer one. Uh, something could be soft and fine and be more luxurious, and it could last you for decades and stuff, but it doesn't mean it's meant for the Arctic Circle and stuff. There are sort of limitations, and in general, dress hats are not meant for really bad weather. Um, Things like western hats are more like work hats. You know, they're meant to get ran over by horses and things. And uh, outback hats are, are meant for, you know, adventure and, you know, beating up and stuff. So, yeah, Akubras, uh, westerns, things like that will be better. Um, shorter brims, that's about it. Thicker hats, not softer hats. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. 